thank you so much, Sayyid Haider, for that recitation of the dua after Fajr. Inshallah, we can all take advantage of these beautiful du'as that we're learning. Assalamu alaikum, dear viewers, and welcome once again to Hijab and Etiquette. Now, today we're going to be discussing the politics of clothing because in recent years, the hijab you can say has become a symbol, a political statement. It's become an act of rebellion as such against Western society, which seems to oppress the women and make women a form of sexual entertainment. Now joining me is our guest, Sister Masuma Jaffa. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Would you say that the hijab is an act of rebellion or is that a really harsh way of looking at it? Um, I think it is to a way, in, in a way because I think um, the Western society is very much moving towards sexualizing mm -hmm. um, everything. Yes. Um, you know, especially with um, the uh, internet and so forth that we have you know in the olden days it was something that was um, done very discreetly whereas now it's mm -hmm. very open mm -hmm. um, the advertisements that are out there mm -hmm. the you know the the e even the cartoons now mm -hmm. it's you know I was looking you know at back thinking back at the cartoons that I used to watch compared to you know what my children watch and now compared to what is there now because my children are a lot older now and I just mm -hmm. feel like there is a sense of sexualism that's happening very subconsciously, but very discreetly in all of these things. Can, can you give us a few examples? Um, I think it's it's like, for example, when I was when I used to watch cartoons, it was very much Tom and Jerry, and yeah. then, you know, Tom would taste Jerry, and it was you know <laughs> that it was just that concept of sort of mm. you know fun and and I remember well, it well. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now it just seems to me like um, I. I, I I can't think of any sort of examples of where they're watching, but I think, you know, it's like even and the women are very sort of, um, you know, the the what they're wearing is very, you know, even if it's um, an, an animated uh, figure, yeah, it's very much sort of wearing very sort of skimpy clothes, mm. very tight clothes, mm. you know, like a bright red lipstick yeah. and sort of, you know, really flirty towards the the other character, cartoon character, yeah. and it's it just seems very. It's not what I want my children to be no. seeing at such a young age. Yeah. It's almost as if like we're telling our young girls that like the only way you're going to get in the world is like if you're just flirtatious and yeah. seductive with men. Exactly. And that that's so sad. Um, I guess one thing um, I've heard quite a lot ever since I've started wearing the hijab is that some sisters and even some brothers have turned around and said that wearing the hijab in the West is a contradiction because it's not the norm over here. You know, most people, they go around uncovered, whereas when you see a lady wearing the abaya, the scarf, the chador, she looks different. So people are going to stare at her like, is it a contradiction or are we just looking at it in the wrong way? Um, I think in the olden days where there were very few Muslims, yes, we used to stand out quite a bit. But I think, especially living in the UK, living in London, it's, you know, there are so many Muslims around, so many women who are covering, choosing to cover themselves that I think it's become quite norm. Yes. Um, I, I don't think people sort of bat an eyelid now when they see a Muslim woman. It's, it's, it's you know, they, they see us around everywhere. What about, um, for example, I'm a reaver and I actually, uh, before I moved to London, I lived in a village where everyone was white and English. Mm. Um, what about in that case? Okay, so again, I think it comes, it, you have to sort of take it back to what God dictates. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a minimum requirement mm -hmm. that is there where you have to cover your body, you have to cover your hair, um, you have to, you know, the only thing that should be showing is your face and your hands. Mm -hmm. You have to cover your feet. Um, and it has to be covered with loose clothing. Yes. Um, now, how you choose to do that is, mm -hmm. is your decision. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether you want to wear an abaya, whether you want to wear a chador, whether you want to wear just, you know, baggy jeans and baggy top, that's up to you. Yes. As long as, you know, you're fully covered 
and with loose attire, mm -hmm. which doesn't show the shape of your body, mm -hmm. um, then it's up to you how yeah. you want to wear. But um, so you may choose if you're living in a place where you know there aren't that many Muslims, you may want to blend in more by choosing to wear Western clothes, mm -hmm. as long as you are covered mm -hmm. appropriately. It doesn't matter how you do it. Yes. So if you feel okay by wearing an abaya and a chador, I feel like I'm getting much more attention than I, I feel comfortable with, mm -hmm. then you don't need to wear that. Nowhere yeah. in the Quran does it say you have to wear a specific type of dress. Yeah. It's just a matter of ensuring that you're covering yourself fully. And that minimum requirement must never be um, put aside. Yes for the sake of, oh, I'm standing out more, that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, of course, you know, if we are sticking to the guidelines set by the Sharia, then it doesn't matter what we wear as such. We can wear, you know, Arab style clothing, clothing <coughs> like the chador, we can wear Asian clothes, we can wear Western clothes. It, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, as long as we're sticking to the guidelines. Yeah. And it, it's funny, I actually, I had a conversation with a sheikh about this and he gave me a brilliant answer and he basically he said yes the muslim woman does get stared at in the west because she's dressed differently to other women but it's not an act but it's not a lustful. it's not a lustful gaze yeah. you know it's just a look like oh you look a bit different a bit funny maybe yeah. like it's not out of lust and that's the whole purpose of the hijab it's to stop men from staring at us as sexual objects yeah. and and it may actually then open up conversation and communication on you know why are you wearing what you're wearing mm -hmm. you know explain that to me and, and and that's a beautiful way to do the bleak to do dawah where yes. you're actually then talking about islam and saying that i'm choosing to wear this because I believe in a creator who's helping me take care of my soul, not my body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. Now, as we live here in the West, mashallah, like there are so many sisters who, you know, they want to not only succeed in the Akhira, but succeed in the dunya as well. And But they might be worried about how their hijab might affect them. They might be worried, oh, you know, if I go to a job interview wearing my hijab, maybe they might turn me down. Like, maybe I'll miss out on opportunities. Maybe I'll miss out on having fun. Because at the end of the day, we all want to have fun. We don't want to be serious all the time. What would you say to a sister who might be worried about being judged by her clothing? I think um, first and foremost, um, get her to realize that a lot of it is in her own head mm -hmm. rather than what's actually out there. Mm -hmm. So she's building it up in her own head mm -hmm. and, and making it a bigger thing than it, it actually is. Mm -hmm. um, Secondly, get her to talk to women who are wearing hijab yes. and actually, you know, find out how what their experiences are. And there, there can be a few negative experiences. And again, knowing those negative experiences will help her prepare mm -hmm. if anything like that happens to her. But, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot more positive experiences than negative. I mean, I think most people are very accommodating mm -hmm. when it comes to the way you want to dress. There's, there's a, a very few hand, you know, handful of people who have a problem with it and mm -hmm. they'll always have a problem with something or other mm -hmm. so I'm not going to dictate my life according to what they say or they feel I'm going to do what works for me and I think the last thing I would say to this sister is know that God is in control mm -hmm. so when it comes to a job interview a university interview or anything else that you're aiming for if you have God by your side you're going to succeed mm -hmm. if you don't have God by your side then mm -hmm. even if you get that job or that university position, mm -hmm. you're not going to succeed, whether it's in this life or in the hereafter. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important to understand that God is in control. Risk comes from God. You know, um, he will only give you what's good for you. And he and it's not about giving up this world for the Akhara. It isn't. You can have mm -hmm. both this world and, and the Akhara. Mm -hmm. This world was created for us. But it's a matter of using it to make us get closer to Allah and not sort of sinking in it. it it's it's like you know holding the world in my hand and using it using everything that god has given me but not letting it enter my heart mm -hmm. it's 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 the i suppose the example would be like a a ship a ship needs water to sail mm -hmm. but when the water enters the ship the ship will sink yes. in the same way i need this world to function to have fun to do mm -hmm. everything i want to 
But if I let it enter my heart, where all that matters is this world, then then I will too sink and drown. Yes, um, your that statement it reminds me of this beautiful saying by our Imam Imam Al Qadim alayhi salam, where he says that this world it's like seawater. The more you drink from it, the more it dehydrates you and eventually it kills you. But like if we're just swimming along in it, you know, quite happy, then it's not going to harm us as Mm. such. And um, it's it's interesting as well um, what you mentioned about speaking to other sisters about the hijab. I completely agree with you. I know in my own journey, speaking to other sisters of various different ages, whether they're my age or whether they're older than me, it's been a huge source of inspiration mm. to me and you know it reminds me of what Amir al muminin alayhi salam says that you know we are we become our best when we are surrounded by good people who support us not toxic people who want to put doubts in our mm. minds and stop us from succeeding yeah for sure i think it's it's really important who your friends are yes. and a lot of the way you behave and the decisions you will make will be influenced by your friends. Yes. So again, having a group of friends who will bring you closer to Allah mm-hmm. rather than away from Him mm-hmm. is really important to mm-hmm. ensure. Um, yeah. Finally, sister, I would just like to ask, you know, one of the most important things to try and remove misconceptions surrounding Muslims is being able to talk to other people of different faiths. And I was just wondering, how can we make ourselves more open and more approachable to non-Muslims while wearing the hijab in our daily lives? I think um, it's understanding what the hijab stands for. So, It's not just a a clothing Mm -hmm. where, you know, um, I think Muslims tend to go to one extreme or the other. So you have Muslims who will um, wear the clothing and then feel that they have the right to interact as much as they want Mm -hmm. with the opposite gender. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's no sort of barrier there at all. Mm -hmm. And then you've got other Muslims who will wear the attire and feel that they can't interact at all. Yeah. Um, and I think we need to find a middle ground mm-hmm. where you know I'm wearing, um, I'm covering myself mm-hmm. and I will interact is in what is necessary. And mm-hmm. what is necessary is to be open to people, um, to welcome people to come and talk to me and ask me why I wear what I wear. And if they have any questions, no matter how silly those questions mm-hmm. seem to me, mm-hmm. You know they should feel comfortable to be able to talk to me about them mm. so just smiling at people yes, um, yes. you know s- sort of when you walk past people you know just 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 giving them a little smile is not against my hijab mm-hmm. it's just sort of saying you know I acknowledge you as a human being mm-hmm. and I'm a human being and you know and and it just opens all you know or, or good day or you know the weather's really nice today just just opening up a conversation so that then if they feel they want to ask me something they can and you know me being quite comfortable with answering and again if I can only answer the questions if I understand the hijab myself Mm -hmm. if I don't if I'm just wearing it um, because I've been told to wear it and I really resent it then that's going to come across as well yeah yeah that would be quite an awkward moment wouldn't it Mm. yeah um and absolutely smiling is just the best thing and it's the easiest way of giving sadaqah as well like isn't it beautiful a religion that rewards its followers for smiling and it's very infectious so if someone's having a really bad day and you just smile at them it just it just picks them up a little bit as well which is really you've helped another human being which is what islam is about is helping the you know Mm. the creation as well Mm, it it really does like that's something you know I know in my daily life you know when I'm going out I'm getting a coffee at Starbucks I'm picking up some food like I try to be nice and polite because at the because there's this kind of mentality where like sometimes you know we look down at people that in retail or whatever and you know I I just think that that's awful. We should never look down at a human being. You know, we're all the same. It doesn't matter, like, if I'm working as a producer and presenter and this guy's working in Starbucks, it doesn't matter. No, not at all. Halal earning, that's what it's about. That's the main thing. Yeah, 
for that's, sure. That's and, I, and I think it's important for us to um, <clears throat> realize that it's, it's, you know, if I'm wearing hijab, I'm actually representing Islam. So the way that I behave, the way that I talk, the way that I interact with people is um, what I'm doing is I'm saying to them, this is what Islam is. Because they're not going to look at it and say, oh, Masma did this. They're going to look at it and say, a Muslim woman did this. Yeah. So it's really important for me to be the best um, advertisement for Islam. Yes, a flag bearer yes, for Islam. Yes, exactly. exactly. Thank you so much, sister, um, for joining us today. I'm afraid we've run out of time. But dear viewers, please stay tuned for the next segment where your thick questions will be